Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm going to get going. Um, as it was so well introduced, I'm going to talk about um, pollinating build attestations with Kubernetes, Tetragon, and eBPF. Um, there's going to be lots of uh, bee-related puns. So please, like, I I'll say in a second, I've got terrible humor. Just laugh. Uh, help me out um, and try and have some fun along the way. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I'll try and make my slides work and we'll get going. So level zero, um, no talk would be right without an introduction. Um, my name is Tom. Yes, unfortunately that is me um, on holiday in Morocco. Um, I am an open source engineer at TestifySec, um, a relatively new role. So this is the first time I've got the pleasure of saying that. Um, yeah, if anyone has seen mo the, the B movie, you like jazz? Yeah, okay. help me out, guys. Come on, just give, give, me, give me an easy day here. Um, my powers or my strengths, um, I come from mainly a Kubernetes background um, and a sort of DevOps-like. Um, I do security now, um, and my main language is Golang. I'm kind of proficient in Python a bit, but I shouldn't say that in public. Um, weaknesses, definitely eBPF. Um, and I'll preface this, I am not an eBPF guy, so take it easy on me. Hopefully for everything that um, you learn from this talk, I'll get to learn from others afterwards in terms of discussion and conversation and stuff. Security, I think anyone that does security will probably say they're not good at security. Humans aren't good at security, and that includes me. Um, so yeah, um, take, yeah. Uh, li listen to what I say, but don't necessarily trust everything I say. I mean, that's probably the, the right thing. Humor. Humor's terrible, I've got a weakness for tiramisu, and I've got terrible dancing. If you're coming to Kubaroki, you'll definitely see that, and you'll see more of what is in that horrible picture in my intro slide. So, level one, um, and that is building secure software. So, my journey began in trying to understand this about two or so years ago, and someone said to me, can you go away and learn about this? So, I went away and I tried to understand what this whole new thing called supply chain security was. Um, and the main thing that occurred to me is it's all about trying to understand how we can secure the build system. At least that was the main focus that I found when I was starting out. Um, so let's sort, of, let's sort of work through how we build software, right? And if at least, and sorry, eBPF and Cilium, if I've horribly doctored these, these B images, but I thought they were fun. Um, we love to pull in a ton of libraries, right? We love to just use other people's code. Well, I, I do. I, I want to feel cool, like pretending that I wrote it myself, but really the real geniuses are writing it for me. So I'll put in a, lo a load of libraries. Um, I'll automate the build. At least these days, I've done enough Kubernetes and YAML that I really don't want to have to spend too much time doing this. Really, this is copying and pasting a load of YAML from somewhere else that builds my Go thing and puts it in some parcel that I can deploy places, and that's about it. And then maybe someone on my team will review it. They might be on the, on the bus looking through their phone and be like, yeah, it looks good to me, bro. And then we're done. That's pretty pretty easy, straightforward way to build software, right? Um, let's look back for a second, and hopefully this is big enough, but if you look really closely, and if you were eagle-eyed before, you might see a bit of a problem. And just to preface, um, GitHub, please don't ban me for violating the terms of service if you do see this, um, but I actually did this. Um, what I want to point out to you is my little uh, GitHub Actions YAML. And you'll notice that I pulled in Go Releaser, except it's not Go Releaser. Uh, this is the Go Releaser GitHub Action, but what I actually did was I created an organization called Go Releaser, and I dropped the E in the ER. After that, I just copied the GitHub action um, and added a bit of hacker magic. Yep, I just got pwned. And all of a sudden, as you can imagine, um, people left, right, and center are pulling in from my GitHub action um, and building their stuff with my potentially malicious software. Um, so yeah, th this stuff um, is getting easier and easier, but really to secure it is getting, I think, harder and harder. Um, so yeah, as I, as I sort of alluded to, game over. Um, so how do we, you know, after I insert the coin and start the game again, how do we proceed to level two and try and solve this problem? I want to introduce to you attestations. I understand that this might not be a security audience, so I'm going to try and do my best job of explaining it all to you. An attestation, at a simple point, in the way I like to see it, is a signed piece of metadata that gives you a an idea about something. In this case, this is a, an attestation, um, the, the main body of it, called a predicate, which basically tells you, in this case, what commands will run inside my GitHub action. Of course, I've got my go release a release, dash dash clean, which I expected to be there, and then I've got this evil hacker magic, which you can see I'm not really a red team person, so don't expect any crazy hacking from me today. Um, but 
if I have this attestation, um, I can transform it, um, or that predicate rather, I can transform it into this bundle of JSON, it's all it is, um, with a base64 encoded version of it, sign that base64 encoded payload, and hey presto, I can verify it with my key, and then I can start, I mean at least if I'm really clever, start inspecting it and trying to understand what went on in that build, and hopefully stop that GitHub action from ruining my life. Um, how can I verify it? Well, one of the ways that I can do it, um, full disclosure, I'm a maintainer on a project called Witness, which is a project for really, um, I would say, easily being able to create in toto attestations and verify them um, in your supply chains. But I can use a tool like Witness to go and verify my attestation, and I might also have some policy um, to sort of inspect those attestations, which I'll show you later. Um, I also hopefully will have a, a key to verify the signature for that policy, because that policy wants to be signed as well. So hopefully level two complete, right? Well, unfortunately, this is where um, the, uh, the, the evil villain in this story comes in. So a wild hacker has appeared. Oh, hold on. He's, ex he's used an exposed Kate's API server to run a process inside my build job. Oh no, what does that mean? Uh, well. Unfortunately for me, it's super effective. By the way, by the way I've been way, playing way too much game, uh, Pokemon on my phone recently. There's this WASM module thing that you can install on your iPhone. It's great. But I won't spend too much time talking about that. The attestation looks the same. But I thought we were securing the supply chain, right? I thought this was solving all my problems. But in fact, it's made everything just as bad as it was before. It didn't solve anything. What did I get from my attestations? So. What do we have to do for level three? We have to beat the evil hacker, right? Um, and how, how do we do that? Um, if we want to be the very best, B spelled B-E-E. -E. Yeah, hopefully you got that. This is terrible. Um, right, um, so yeah, how do we beat the hacker? Um, so we want to generate our attestations, as I showed you earlier. We have our GitHub Actions pipeline or whatever is running, um, and we're going to make generate our metadata to secure ourselves, right? Awesome. Um, but where is that metadata coming from, right? Um, in this case, I've got my runner running in some environment, and um, the evil hacker exposed it because I exposed the Kubernetes API server, which will come on to in a moment. But if you look at my generate attestation .sure that I've mentioned above, I'm just basically either pulling that from the source code that the runner used to invoke my build or, or something, something like that. It's not telling me what actually happened when the build took place. So when evil hacker comes along and executes his evil payload uh, with wget or whatever, that's all out of band from what the, 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 yeah, the attestation is generating. I can't see any of that, let alone verify it. So I started sort of working through this and going down the security rabbit hole of how do I fix this? Well, I could have this like observer pod, I guess, and all I want from this observer pod is nothing but facts. And I sort of looked at myself and I was like, well, Tom, where are you going to get all these facts from? And this was like a year, year two ago, and I thought to myself, I have no idea until um, I came across um, eBPF, which I knew nothing about now, um, technically, and I still know very little, little about today. Um, but I went back to the evil hacker and I said, you're going to pay for that. I'm going to write a Kubernetes controller. It's going to watch all my runner pods and keep them safe. Preface this, this is all on Kubernetes. If you're running on GitHub hosted runners, I can't help you, unfortunately. Um, it's going to use eBPF. So hackers like, cool story, bro. It's not that deep. I was just, just having a bit of fun, but whatever. If you want to take it, take it more seriously. How do, I, how do I map eBPF events to Kubernetes pods? And this was me about two years ago, and then finally, or maybe three, two years later, or what felt like it, I came across, genuinely, I hope Liz is in the audience, the most awesome talk ever. Um, I remember where I was, I wasn't at uh, SecurityCon, but it was a talk about a project that would map all of these eBPF events seamlessly straight to the pod, and just basically did my job for me, right, for, the, for what I want to do. All the magic's done inside of this project that's called Tetragon. I advise if you don't know about Tetragon, watch this talk. It's super cool. Um, so I made a Testagon. What is a Testagon? It's a Kubernetes controller. It uses gRPC to stream and cache those Tetragon events. And then it watches for annotated events, or an annotated pods, pardon, and then condenses them into te the Tetragon events into an attestation so I can verify it later. It also has a totally AI-generated mascot, um, which you should have seen in that, in that last picture. So final, final boss, level four, demo. Now, 
I was up until 4 a.m. trying to get this to work. So if it doesn't, please just give me, give me a break. I'm super tired at this point. Um, also, um, the builds are taking like crazy, crazy long. So um, I've gone ahead and built some already, but I'm going to go and set one off anyway, just so we can look at it later. So a testagon at the moment only works with Tekton pipelines. Um, so it, uh, uh, yeah, a, a runner, so to speak, running in Kubernetes, but I built it with the intention that it can run with anything, whether it be um, a runner from uh, like a GitLab CI runner or um, Argo workflows or whatever it is that you're building your pods in. Um, so if I go and take my pod.yaml, um, which hopefully you can see here, which has got a, a digest and so on, um, I can try and create the pod like this, and hopefully the evil hacker will be stopped. Aha! Okay, so we're seeing a few things here. Um, so it's saying it failed, so this is a gatekeeper policy that I've made ahead of time, which I'll hopefully show you in a minute, but it's saying a few things. It's saying no Ubuntu please, that's interesting, that's an extra curveball that I threw for myself. Port 80, what is this, 2001? And then um, why are you opening main.go so many times? Wild hacker me thinks. Okay, so let's try and see what's going on here. So if I get pods, I should have that task run that I was running from before. Um, yeah, 69 seconds. See if this is giving me any, anything interesting. So I'll, I mentioned earlier, I'm not a hacker, so don't expect anything crazy from me, but I'm cloning this thing along with my artifact. The artifact that I'm planning on build, by the way, is called Might Test, which we'll show you in a second. It's not very clever. Um, but I'm cloning this thing called Solusploit, which I don't recognize, and it's talking to me about active PID, target PIDs, and operations not permitted. My main dot go, oh god, this doesn't, yeah, this doesn't look good at all. Um, let's see if we run this, run this container, let's see what it does. Um, let's copy that and docker run. Again, if this doesn't work, please don't kill me. Go on. Well, we'll let that, we'll let that build. But it's doing some crazy stuff, right? Um, but luckily, we've got a test gone, a tester gone running in the background. Uh, seamlessly creating uh, stack traces and reconcile errors uh, in the background, but you should get the picture. Okay, yeah, it's built for the wrong architecture. Basically, what the solar exploit is doing, um, and I'm simulating the wild hacker um, in, it sort of injecting this into the build, it is using um, a load of syscalls to pause the go build in the middle of it executing, and it's injecting Again, just some evil hacker, evil hacker logic. Um, so when I run my mic test, which you won't see, and maybe I can just delete everything at the end and, and run it for you on my AMD64 Kubernetes cluster, because for some reason this is all arm. Um, um, yeah, you should see some extra log lines, and a load of stuff's been injected maliciously, and we, we absolutely don't want that. So um, let's see, this build is just finished. So it's saying stored in Archivista. So let's go check that out. Archivista is um, it's part of the Intoto organization, and it's basically a really easy way to store and query your attestations. So you can upload them at the end of your builds, and then you can do what I'm doing now, which is check them out. Um, so I can see this attestation was generated for my image with this digest, and I can see that I've got an attestagon attestation, which is, looks pretty cool. Um, apart from, oh, well, hold on, if I just scroll down, you can see these can be quite long. I'm going to go main.go. Um, there we go. You can see that I've translated the Tetragon events, which my controller was looking at, essentially into um, yeah, into a form that I can query them and start writing policy against them. I appreciate that this doesn't look very. Um, hold on. Let's see if I can. Let's see if I can make this look a bit better. Let's see if I can try and use my laptop properly. How about that? There we go, testicle provenance. So I'm just trying to condense those events down into something that I can query and make a policy for or get along the line. Um, and I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to try and go into that too much detail. But what that means is I can start writing a policy. So if I go to my policy at Testagon. As I mentioned to you, the Witness Project has a, uh, a built-in policy engine, so I can start writing policy files to check the attestations that are in Archivista or wherever else, 
um, yeah, to make sure that the right ones are present, and hopefully I can inspect them as well to try and verify that they contain the things that I want. You can see that I want to have a material attestation, a product attestation, an environment attestation. We won't go into the detail of those today. And then I finally want to have my attestagon provenance at the very end. And you'll see this blob of, of rubbish. What if I get that out because it's a base64 encoded version of a different file? You're going to see some Rago. So this is where I was getting from what I was getting from my gatekeeper policy earlier. I can set things like if there are any TCP connections made with the destination port 2022, like SSH or something, I don't want to do that. Port 80, um, shame on you, Ubuntu. Please change that to 443. Um, we don't want to use that. Um, it's, it's an unsafe way of communicating with, 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 with remote servers. Um, yeah, socket port 80, that same, same sort of thing. Um, and I've even gone ahead and blocked an IP related to something you've been to related, just, just for the giggles. Um, also, there's a, there's a, a cat of he um, hello txt, um, or, or yeah, file opened of hello txt. I don't want that, it's just an example. But most importantly, at the very end, I've got this. So I've noticed that. Um, when the solar exploit was running, um, an unnecessary amount of times was the uh, main.go of my project opened. So I've added this, uh, this constraint to basically go, why are you opening main.go so many times? Um, so that's all, that's all fine and well. Um, how do I fix this? Well, if I go into my hack, I've got a fi fixed version because I don't want to do Vim live. Um, right, so I've changed a few things here. Um, I've switched to Alpine Git, so I'm not um, using Ubuntu, and I also don't need to apt install Git and all of that stuff, do the apt update and apt, apt upgrade. Um, I've also removed the evil hacker's injection. I appreciate that in real life, I hope the evil hacker would be a lot more evil than this um, and probably wouldn't have access to the, the task YAML itself. But you see the point I'm trying to make. Um, so if I go ahead and I try and not break everything and I apply the fixed task, um, we should get, no, too much time not doing Kubernetes. We should get the ability to rerun this um, and theoretically everything should go. Um, so yeah, that, that's basically the premise of it. Um, there's still stuff that I need to fold out. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to, at this point, probably um, take some questions, unless there's anything pressing that I've missed. Um, I don't want to go over time, so, um, and hopefully once that, yeah, once that's run, I can show you. Um, I mean, to be fair, before we take questions, I think it's about to finish now. Come on. This is where the, the nice elevator music needs to come in. Um, create a new predicate. Is it going to finish? Maybe 25. Okay, maybe it's not. Anyway, what we would expect to see or hope to see is now that that's fixed, we've remediated all the things that is going to be triggered off by the attestagon attestation being queried by all of those Rego constraints. And what we should be ended, oh, oh, hold on. Let's use Archivista CTL to take um, a quick look at that attestation. Um, and I'll get the digest, and I will go to my pod, and I will not try and use Vim shortcuts to do this. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way, and I'm going to create that pod. I expect one will still fail, um, which I'll come on to in a moment, but hopefully that will look a lot better. Hello TXT, why? So the reason why is because while with our original attestations, we were only just seeing what's in the source, in, 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 in the runner task, or the job, or whatever you want to call it. Um, in, my, in my Docker file for the project I'm building, you can see that I'm echoing hello world to home hello txt. I appreciate no malicious thing, but it's pretty cool that I can create attestations for um, supply chain purposes that don't just tell me what's executing. They tell me everything about what's going on in that invocation. If I go ahead and I delete that um, and I commit it, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. Get a YubiKey, they said. It'll be great, they said. Jingle, jingle, they said. Um, if I commit that, if it lets me, or it doesn't because probably because of the dongle. If I, if I were to have committed that, um, you would see that um, that final 
uh, yeah, that final problem would no longer occur and we would be done. Um, I think you're probably all done with me talking as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open the floor for questions. Um, yeah, just so you know, my GitHub user is chaos in the CRD. Um, yeah, please um, also reach out to me on Slack, CNCF Slack or whatever. Um, I will get my final slide up as it's got a bunch of QRs. Um, and yeah, like, yeah, final slide. Hope you've enjoyed the, 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 the sort of arcade-ish um, Pokemon theme. I had fun creating it. Thank you very much for listening to my talk. Um, yeah, not enough. <laughs> Goodbye, Solus Boy. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have time for one question, if anybody has one. It was a great presentation. I liked all the jokes. Thanks. <laughs> Can you maybe repeat if there is a requirement for Tekton or not? Absolutely, and I can probably show you. So the only thing at this current moment in time I'm depending on it being Tekton 4 is this. Let me show you. So what I need to create my attestation is to understand what, um, what artifact was built in my pipeline. In the same way, if you might be familiar with the project Tekton Chains, it creates salsa provenance for Tekton. Um, it needs to understand what was built and you need to pass that out, uh, which I can show you how it does that. Um, dash n default, dash o yaml. So if I get this and I'll put it to less so I can search through it. Um, I think it's around the bottom. I need to output, I forget what it's called yet, I need to output in the terminated state a message and you can see that my digest is SHA-256 BDD-071 blah 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 blah. That I think is the only dependency. So I say it only works with Tekton, technically that's not really a constraint because you, if you, in your whatever workflow engine or whatever you're using, you can do the same thing, it will work. It, oh, sorry, I'll correct myself. It should work. Um, so yeah, that's why I say it, it, it only supports Tekton pipelines, but the intention is that you could use this for like basically anything. I'm using this for builds, like in my opinion, like maybe just straight Tetracon would be better use, but you could technically use this for any pod that you wanted to have like a, an attestation for. It doesn't need to be for a build. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, great, Tom. Thanks for showing us how we can catch them all with Tetragon. Thank you for laughing at my jokes.